I'm going to start off with a show of hands today. So how many people here are really into like doing outdoors? They really like being outdoors. Like it could be for kayak, kayaking, hiking, or even just being outdoors, just getting fresh air. All right. So I'm going to do one more show of hands. How many of you can confirm that after being outdoors, you guys have felt better afterwards? Okay, this is the majority of you here today. I also feel the same. I feel that my mood has improved and my productivity levels usually increase after spending time outdoors. And that's really great because a lot of you also feel the same way. However, these outdoor activities today that we were just talking about, they're currently being threatened. With growing infrastructure and a looming climate crisis threatening to have a bigger presence in our lives, the nature may become less accessible to us in the near future. News headlines have been talking about weather disasters and talking about how grim outlooks are coming from recent climate research. And this is becoming the norm. So that's why we're here today. We're gonna to be talking about how news headlines are basically being negative and they're supposed to be inspiring to us today, but they're not. They're supposed to be covering how all of us should be going towards a sustainable future. And there are individuals and organizations out there who are working towards that sustainable future and that's great. But there's a study from UC Berkeley, um, someone named Jill Suddy from the Greater Good magazine and she talks about how being exposed to fear-inducing stimuli over and over again with unsettling images streaming in from across the globe, thanks to this modern technology, can make us feel helpless, which is not good for our personal well-being or just for society as a whole. These environmental initiatives aren't being covered enough, but instead they're being replaced with negative headlines and current events and all that's wrong with the world. And Honestly, if we keep seeing that each and every day, it's going to be just affecting us and have negatively over time. It's just going to be going through our mental health and that's not a great thing. I know that these effects have made themselves present on WVU's campus in the last spring in 2021. Rallies were organized in response to not so great mental health resources that are coming out. And there were rallies organized talking about how we need to improve these mental health resources and right here on campus. They were saying that um, these mental health discussions were out there in social media and in Zoom town halls. And it's great because the university decided to respond to that. This fall 2021, they've addressed um, and initiated this Healthy Minds University, which addressed long-term mental health issues with students. On the other hand, environmental sustainability initiatives have also been coming to light on campus. Just this spring in 2021, once again, um, WVU's Office of Sustainability started a STAR report, and it said that they earned a silver rating on campus in recognition for its sustainability achievements. This means there are ongoing sustainability initiatives on campus. It's great because that means we can reduce waste and we can improve and conserve energy ultimately. So the university and other bodies of authority can keep making these initiatives for us. And we want to see that, but there's going to be a lot more that needs to be done to make some long-term change. The community's looking for this positive change. Students are looking for this positive change. Even people out there, I dare even say the world is looking for this positive change. So that's what brings us here today. Where does that change even begin? So during the COVID-19 pandemic, there were many individuals who struggled with mental health. I can speak for myself. I'm sure other people can also speak to this. There was a report that was uh, published by the CDC last year in 2020 that stated in June 2020, 40% of adults in the United States reported struggling with mental health or substance use. It's, it's not hard to see how this happened. Living in this constant state of uncertainty on whether or not things will open and things will close, it's not natural and it's just difficult to form roots per se. 
but having this kind of mental health discussion will definitely mitigate some of these effects. So climate change could be attributing to some of these. And as we are addressing these climate change um, research and have people addressing these issues, they should also be observing the mental health of the individuals in those areas who are also being affected the, the most by climate change. So the first thing we need to do is to acknowledge that mental health issues and environmental issues are more connected than we think they are. And there's actually a quote from the Yale School of the Environment studying this new field, connecting the two, called eco-psychology. And it connects the fields of the environment, the body, and the mind. So we're gonna read a report from that. And it says that these studies have shown that time in nature, as long as people feel safe, it is an antidote for stress. It can lower blood pressure and stress hormone levels. It can reduce nervous system arousal, enhance immune system function, and uh, it could increase self-esteem. That's a great thing, right? Reduce anxiety, improve mood. These all sound like great things. Another thing I wanted to point out from these quotes is look at the dates for all of the quotes I've printed out so far. So this was from 2020, also from 2020. This actually came out this year, 2018. So within the last five years, we have so many people researching and this growing body that acknowledging that mental health and environmental health are all connected. So how do we start acknowledging that? I know that one place to start is in our own workplaces or in schools. I know that companies and institutions commonly have like these green spaces that they can use and they often go underutilized. One way to do it is to use it more. They uh, could use social events or they can host company events, weather permitting outdoors. And this could actually improve employee morale from just being outdoors and just having this space used to its potential instead of just showing off, hey, we have a really cool landscape and it's aesthetic, things like that. So another thing I wanna cover based off of these companies and these institutions who are having these green spaces is connecting the mental health. And we are social creatures by nature. So one way to show that is having so, um, social surroundings and natural surroundings acknowledged. There are two types we need to be mindful of, which I stated. So natural surroundings, I define it as the environment and the natural resources provided to us in that environment. Social surroundings, on the other hand, I re it's a little more uncommonly known, but it's more covering the interactions that we have with ourselves, with other people, whether we have a tie to them or not. So to address our natural surroundings and taking care of that first, we need to talk about how go governments of all levels do have the power to make that change, including in the local level. And the way that we could do that is just advocate for better mental health policies and better environmental health legislation. It could address problems with litter and pollution. It could be something as small as cleaning up in the park and having a litter ordinance to something of a bigger scale in the federal level, like conserving a US national park. For social surroundings, I think this one needs to be more approached in a very delicate manner because we need to be approaching social surroundings and healing that with an open mind. That is how we're going to do that. And we need to take care of the interactions we have with other people, interactions with ourselves. The community, we need to treat people with respect. And that's a very common quote to have. The, not only do we need to treat these interactions with respect, but we need to make sure that they're safe. We need to look out for each other. That's a very paramount thing to do. So not only that, we also have the issue of self-care. Everybody talks about face masks and talking about bath bombs, and that doesn't always work for everybody. I know for me personally, I like to do like video games or puzzles, things that challenge the mind. So self-care, contrary to popular belief, actually has a, something for everybody. It varies. So not everybody could have you know, a face mask going on. Sometimes it could be a video game for them. So, 
knowing this, the issues that surround environmental health and mental health are reported separately, typically, but we need to acknowledge that they are not as separate as they seem to be. They are something that everybody needs to take responsibility for, something that we need to take care of in the environment and the mind, because if not us, who's going to do it? So if you didn't get anything else from my discussion today, remember this quote. To improve our headspace, we need to act now to improve our green space, because ultimately, a clean environment will help foster clean minds. Thank you.